Hello and welcome to this video in which I will try to build a VS Code extension within 5 days and then teach you how you can also build something similar. I know nothing about building VS Code extensions so it should be fun. So here's the timestamp if you want to jump to the learning portion of this video. Day 1 The first thing I did was go to the marketplace and look up various extensions to get an idea of what I can build that I will use on a regular basis. I have decided what I wanna build. So my extension should have three features. First, it should be able to fix some code errors in code. So basically I can select some code and it should fix that. Second, code generation. So basically I write a comment like create a method to delete a user. And then it just writes the code. Third feature, a basic chat directly to Bart. Day two. Okay, so today was day two. Uh, this is Microsoft repo. I think it is also in the documentation, but I found it on Stack Overflow. Someone had commented it. Uh, so this is really good. It has a ton of examples with actual code. So this should help me a lot. Three days later. So it's day five and the extension is ready. Uh, it's up on the marketplace. So go check it out. So the repo with the examples helped a lot. And there's still a lot more to learn. There's a lot of things that VS Code has to offer. And now it's time for you to learn. Okay, so first up, we need to install this U and generator code globally. And once we have installed that, we all we need to do is U code and it will give us a bunch of options. We can select as we want and then uh, we can open up the project. So this is the basic template that it has provided us for uh, uh, extension. This is basic package.json. Uh, slightly different, we do have this contributes commands. So every command that is declared here must also be registered inside our extension.ts. Uh, and whatever we write inside this register command, uh, that's what executes whenever this command is called. Okay, let's create a new folder features and in here, let's create another folder get API key and then set API key. Okay, now let's take a look at how we can get uh, API key or any data basically from the user and store it uh, inside our extension globally so that whenever we need to make an API call, uh, we can fetch that API key. Uh, first up, let's create a basic template. We first import VS Code, then we create activate method, which takes a parameter context, and then we export the activate. Now inside this activate, we need to uh, register a command, and then let's take the API key from the user. For this, we will use show input box, uh, and we'll provide the prompt. Prompt is basically what the user will see when that uh, input box shows up. After that, let's check that the API key exists or not. If it does exist, then we will update it into our configuration. So we need to give an key, then value, and finally uh, the scoop. So we will do a global scoop. Now let's add an else. So if we don't have a key, then we'll show an error message. Okay, now here in package.json, you can see we have a command. Let's make another command for set key. Okay, after we have created this command inside our package JSON, uh, we also need to create the configuration. So this is the basic template configuration that we will be needing. So inside you can see if we have properties and inside properties, the key I defined inside set keys is the same as here. Okay, now let's go to extension.ts and now we need to register our command. So it's quite simple. We just import it and call setkey.default and pass the context. Now let's go to, uh, let's run it and test it. As you can see, uh, no key found because I didn't enter anything. This time I'll enter test. And API key saved. Okay, now let's move to the next feature that I want to show you. Uh, another one is uh, fix code. So in this one, we will be dealing with the code editor. Let's create a folder fix code and then a file fix code.ts. Basic template same as last time. This time, instead of updating the key, we will get that key uh, 
uh, because let's uh, suppose we need to make a api call to let's say bard here so for that we'll need a key next up we will check that the key is there or not if it is not we'll throw an error now let's create an editor so we get vs code dot window dot active editor this is basically uh, whatever uh, uh, file you have opened in your editor is the active text editor we will check if that active uh, text editor exists or not because we can have a vs code instance without any editor after that i have just put this uh, message a uh, new code but instead uh, what you should do is perform the processing operation so in my case uh, i was calling bard api here after that i'll do a uh, editor dot edit uh, in this will pass a parameter let's call it edit builder edit builder dot uh, edit builder have uh, three four features like delete insert replace uh, we'll use replace we'll replace the selected code with the new code which is currently just new code so inside the replace we will have to pass a range okay so if you want the text that has been selected so this is an example of how, how i was constructing the prompt okay now we need to go to commands and create the a new command for this fix code now uh, it's not really good if we had to select it and then we uh, press ctrl shift p to get the command palette and there we search for fix code so what i'll do is uh, I'll put this option inside our right click menu. So when we select something inside our text, uh, inside our editor, then we can right click on it and we'll get, we get a menu, right? So at the bottom of that menu, let's uh, put a new option, which will execute this command. So first, let's make a menu above uh, configuration. Then we'll do an editor context. And inside that we'll do a when when basically when that option shows up so editor has selection and then ju we just give the command okay now let's test it as you can see on right clicking we have that option and when i click on that the code gets replaced okay now let's create a new feature called new view okay so the new view will basically open a new tab which will be a html view or you can say a web view. Let's start with basic template of activate method. Inside it, we'll have a register command. Now, inside that, we need to create a panel. So creating a panel is super simple. We just do a create web view panel. And then we pass a few options as I have done here. Uh, I also have a comment so you can read it if you want more detail. Next thing, we will give it HTML. So this method is returning HTML. Uh, currently, it's just throwing error, but let's change that. Now, I have pasted some basic HTML here. Now, this HTML will be displayed in this view. Okay, now we need to just change the title inside our package.json. And finally, let's uh, add this to our extension.ts. Uh, now let's test it. We all we have to do is open up our command palette and just search new view. And we have this HTML view. Okay. After an HTML view, let's do a sidebar. So this one is slightly complicated. I have created a folder sidebar. Inside that, I have a sidebar provider. Now let's create a class sidebar provider, which will inherit web view view provider. Now let's implement this interface. We will have uh, resolve web view. Now let's add two variables. One is view type and other one is view. This view will be using to pass some data from the sidebar to the HTML view. Uh, view type is just an ID basically. Next, let's create a constructor which will have URI exten extension URI. So basically where we will have a static assets like images, uh, CSS, JS. Once we have our constructor, let's create this get nonce method. This is basically for preventing any outside script being executed inside our panel. Okay, now let's create a method here and this will have some HTML. So it will be a slightly bigger method. So let me make some space and then paste it. Okay, so you can see I have this static HTML and here I have some variables. So these variables are basically uh, getting static files like JS files, uh, photos, SVGs and all. And I have passed those SVGs inside our HTML. So uh, I have not yet created this uh, these assets, but let's uh, I have these assets. So let, I'll just copy paste them in, inside my main directory. So I have pasted this assets folder. 
So this has all the assets that I have used inside our HTML. So this uh, URI join path will create a path to this assets folder. And then we can use it just like this. Okay, so once we have this HTML method, the method that returns HTML will replace this throw error with this bunch of code. Now this code that I have highlighted, I will be removing this code, but this code is basically uh, if we want to send data from the view inside our uh, this TS file, I'll just show currently how to send data from this TS uh, to the the view to the main JS. But if you want to send from JS to our uh, TS file, then this code will be needed. Okay, let's remove this one for now, and we'll just put the method. Now let's export this entire class and we should have our uh, provider ready now let's import it in our extension.ts create a new side uh, sidebar provider finally let's push it inside our uh, subscriptions after that we go to package.json inside contributes we will create a view container inside view container we will have an activity bar because we want to show an option inside our activity bar which is like the leftmost most bar we'll give it three fields id title and icon now let's uh, create a view so basically this activity bar option will open up uh, the view that i'm defining now so therefore uh, the id which we have in activity bar should be the same uh, as the main key inside our view so inside our view we'll create uh, an object with the same id uh, which will have an array uh, inside that we'll pass the id of uh, the view type which we have defined in our uh, ID bar class we'll give it a name and a type type should be web view now let's reload the project and test out the extension okay so we do have this sidebar option and when we click on it this opens up uh, let's add one more feature uh, how to pass data so this method add chat method will help us send data from our uh, ts to our main main.js so this add chat method will help us to send data from ts or let's say our main extension to our web view so in this one i'm using the view which i created earlier and passing the data using post message method so this add chat method can be called from anywhere and this will pass the data now let's take a look at our main js once this code that i've highlighted uh, is how i'm receiving the data from our sidebar dot uh, sidebar provider dot ts now once again if we take a look at main dot js we have this old state so this is how i can store the data in a state base which basically means once i update this main dot js it still has its earlier data using the state now let's take a look at how we can call that add chat method. So we have already created a variable. All we need to do is uh, call that method here. I am currently calling it directly inside our activate function of our main activate function. But we can call this method inside our uh, other activate function. Let's say we want to call it in fixed code. We can do that too. We can pass this provider as a parameter inside our fixed code or new view or set uh, set key. Or we can just call it here also. Okay, now let's see if our extension is working properly or not. So as you can see, we can send the message. And if we call that add chat method somewhere, we will also receive a message. Building this VS Code extension was really, really fun. And if this video was fun for you, consider giving a thumbs up and subscribing.